belts until you can get a really good team involved. Uh, you know, have them maybe drop the belts to upcoming uh, Jason Jordan and Chad Gable or Enzo and Cass. Somebody, you know, major that we can get behind and then have them, you know, turn against each other. Have, you know, Bubba turn into Bully and have Devon have him maybe team up with R-Truth instead of Goldust. Because the interesting thing is that the whole thing with Goldust and R-Truth is that... <clears throat> I understand that I think they're trying to recreate the whole thing with, you know, Booker T and Goldust back in the early 2000s. But I think it's just been done already. And I think it's just better off to have Goldust and Stardust face off against each other at Mania and do it for, you know, do it for dad. It would be the best tribute to their father. It'd be a great way to, you know, finally drop the whole Stardust character and turn him into Cody Rhodes. But... I doubt that, uh, with everything that's going on with WWE, I doubt that's probably going to happen right now. Uh, Kalisto will actually be defending the United States Championship in a rematch against Alberto Del Rio at Fastlane. But um, they were going to plan on doing it earlier, but the thing was is that Del Rio, I think, hurt his back during the Rumble matchup in which he, he kind of spiked himself. Uh, Kalisto was supposed to go for like a sunset flip bomb, I believe it was, but botched a little bit, and Del Rio kind of almost took himself out of the deal, <laughs> where he just flipped back, and it was like, ooh. It, it was a pretty nasty bump, but Del Rio's going to be out, at least until Fastlane, just, you know, taking care of his back, not taking so many bumps, probably. So, it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. Um, Stephanie McMahon tried to turn Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose against each other, saying, uh, that, you know, who was going to be the weaker link. I mean, just like, you know, like you were when Seth Rollins turned on you guys, just like Marty Jannetty was when Shawn Michaels turned on him and sent him through the deal. And actually, interesting enough, Marty Jannetty had a lot to say about that comment that Stephanie made on Raw. And it just goes to show you that it seems like Marty Jannetty is really unstable and he is not the best person probably to work with right now. In fact, there was a tweet that somebody said that he... Um, wrote out that he said that a couple of Stephanie's, you know, kids were not even Triple H's. And I see that. I'm just like, really? You're going to you're gonna take it that personally? I mean, I can understand, you know, you not liking them continually to, you know, saying that, you know, oh, you're just the guy who, you know, was the stepping stone for Shawn Michaels' career or something like that. Or you were just that, you know, second wheel. But... Come on, dude. It's just one of those things where, you know, you can't, you don't have to take it that personally. It's not like, you know, they were, you know, bad-mouthing your family, but instead you're going to bad-mouth their family? That just doesn't make sense to me. And I know a lot of people are kind of getting sick and tired of hearing, like, oh, well, this person's the Marty Jannetty of this generation, or he's the Marty Jannetty of this, you know, tag team, and blah, blah, blah. Um... Why is it that, you know, this is the one thing that triggers Marty Jannetty the most? I mean, back when Miz and Morrison were, you know, feuding with each other, and they did the whole, you know, Miz was saying that, you know, he was going to be, he's the Shawn Michaels, and that Morrison was the Marty Jannetty. And, you know, John Morrison said, like, there are actually two Jannettys. There's Marty Jannetty and Mizzy Jannetty. And Marty Jannetty didn't take any, you know, problem with that. But I think that was also because he knew that he was going to be in a match with the Miz the following Raw but it's just one of those things where it's just like, why do you have to take it so personally? And you, you look at you look at that statement that they made about you know Miz saying that he's the Marty, he's the you know Shawn Michaels and Morrison's the Marty Jannetty. Interesting part about that is that when it comes down to it in WWE terms, that is true because Shawn, because Miz is more of a star, and a lot of people are not remembering John Morrison's run in. Uh, well, I should say Johnny Mundo. Who knows how to run in WWE? But you look at wrestling as a whole. I think that John Morrison is definitely the guy who um, <clears throat> who is the Shawn Michaels, and that you know that uh, Miz is kind of like the Marty Jannetty because Miz has only been doing one company. Uh, Johnny Mundo, John Morrison, he's been wrestling all over the place. So I think it'd be like AAA. I know Lucha Underground has had him for a while. He's done so much for the wrestling as a whole that, you know, I think you compare the two careers, I think Johnny Mundo is going to have a more better career than The Miz, Mike Mizanin, will have. So that's just my opinion. But 
WWE has theirs. <clears throat> anyway, so, yeah, they have the whole thing going on with Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose to where they're trying to turn on where Stephanie is, like, trying to turn on them. The only way that I could see this working is, here's the scenario that I see going into Fastlane, is that, you know, there's a little bit of dissension in the ranks or a little bit of crack between cracks between the teaming of Roman and Dean where they start actually, you know, getting frustrated with each other. Stephanie then capitalizes the week before Fastlane, having the two of them face off against each other on a match on Raw, and then Brock Lesnar, you know, takes both of them out, sending a statement and, you know, it, eventually it evolves into one of them turning heel. And one of them, I mean, you know, uh, Roman Reigns or Dean Ambrose. The only person that I'd see that making sense would be Roman Reigns right now. And interesting thing about the whole thing with Roman Reigns is that it's like, how do you really turn him heel? How do you make him heel when Triple H is already heel? I thought about that, and I thought that this might actually be a good idea. If they actually had the matchup at WrestleMania, and Triple H is just about to win, you know, Scott Armstrong is in, and he's the referee, he's kind of the crooked referee, he goes for the one, the two, and gets pulled out actually by Stephanie, and Stephanie is saying, you know, you count that three and you're going to be fired, and Triple H is thinking, well, what are you doing, what are you doing, Roman Reigns hits the spear, and then Stephanie tells, you know, Scott to count the one, two, three, which he does, Stephanie basically turns on Triple H, and she's basically tells me, you know, Roman, get him, get him. And just beats down Triple H, sending him through the announce table. Triple H has to get taken out by a stretcher again. And, you know, the night after Stephanie talks about why she did what she did, she said, you know, it's nothing personal, honey. It's just business. You are just not, you know, you're just not that, you know, good anymore. And you have to realize that your time is up and that the future is now. I may not like Roman Reigns. But he is indeed the future, and I see him as an investment. Where he's just, she's just basically seeing Roman as the next guy. But you know, she doesn't have to like him, but she's gonna be, you know, putting all her money behind you know Roman Reigns. And Roman Reigns could just be like, you know, you know, when she came up to me with this proposal, I didn't think anything of it. But then when I she told me about how Triple H works, I figured, you know what? What is there to lose? I get to take out one of the top of stars, and I get to get the spotlight. So where Roman Reigns actually turns heel, and he's more legit. He's a badass. He is one of those guys that people just hate, and he is going to really, you know, carry the title to definitely different leaps and bounds. But I guess we're just going to have to wait and see whether they're going to turn Roman heel or not. I'd much rather like to see that happen. It's an interesting idea, and maybe they can have Triple H come back, and somehow Stephanie recruits some of the people from NXT where it's like, you know what, you did and create NXT, but NXT is going to be the one that destroys you. And it evolves into something, you know, where it's maybe Triple H's last match, something like that. Maybe he goes one-on-one with, um, you know, Finn Balor, Sami Zayn, somebody like that. Somebody who could really use that victory. But who knows? I'll probably have a little more of a detailed, you know, story when it comes down to it. But, uh, I will talk a little bit about TNA in a bit. It's going to take a short little break. But as promised, I did say that I had another deal for you, courtesy of AJsBelts.com. And here it is, guys. The NWA World Heavyweight Championship. One of the most classic and prestigious titles that any person could have. And it is indeed available for you guys for the low price of $199.99 plus free shipping in the United States. Sorry, guys, in Canada and in European countries and everywhere around the, else around the world. It's only in the USA. You guys can get the NWA World title for $199.99 plus free shipping. If you email them and you mention Pro Talk Wrestling, they will indeed send you the NWA World Heavyweight Championship for that low price and with free shipping, guys. But this deal will only last until Monday at midnight Central Standard Time. So remember that, guys. You can get the NWA World Heavyweight Title Belt for $199.199 plus free shipping when you go to them, email them, and mention Pro Talk Wrestling. You'll get the price. You'll get the free shipping. Honestly, guys, it is a great deal. And for the NWA World Title, you definitely do not want to miss out on that. 
We are back, ladies and gentlemen. This is indeed Pro Talk Wrestling. This is Nate the Great. Guys, thank you for joining me here on this beautiful Friday. After dealing with a nice little snowstorm up here, it's nice to see a little bit of sun. So, speaking of sun, it seems like a ray of sunshine is coming down on TNA as they have actually done some good with the company. Um, and I'm referring to this past week's episode of TNA Impact Wrestling. It was honestly something that was worth watching you guys they had a uh, new x division champion crowned they had a eight-man hardcore war featuring the decay uh eric young and bram defeating beer money and the wolves they also had you know matt hardy and Rebby sky just having this major heat on jeff hardy saying well basically here, here's what happened is that Rebby sky talked about jeff hardy and said you know you're just jealous because my husband's the world champion and that he's no longer under your shadow anymore. So you got what you deserved last week, which was get a pile driver from Eric Young from the ring through a table on the concrete floor. So Jeff Hardy's probably going to be out for a little while longer. But then Kurt Angle came out and he said, you know, you're a disgrace to the title and that he was basically going to get a title shot right here tonight, which makes sense because he did say the night after he uh, defeated EC3 by disqualification that Dixie Carter said that he can get a title shot whenever he wants, at whatever time, wherever, whenever, and he was going to invoke it tonight. So it made sense that they finally got that taken care of. So it was going to be Matt Hardy versus Kurt Angle on the... Uh, <clears throat> main event of the impact show the knockouts had a little bit of a segment in which we saw uh gail kim and maria talking about maria saying that she wanted to help gail she wanted to make it so that gail is more successful than what she is she's saying basically maria saying that you know wrestling is not the way to do it you have to be a smart businesswoman and gail saying like she's proud of what the the knockouts have done she's proud of you know being a knockout and there's nothing that you could do to change it. And again, Maria just kept getting under Gail's skin. You could tell that she was just really, really just tearing in. Say, saying, you know, people like you work for people like me. And then Gail actually grabbed Maria's arm. And you see the just look of fear on Maria's face when Gail's talking. She says, you know something? There are just little persons like you that just talk about it. You want to do something about it? Do something about it. And she just shoves Maria and says, come on, let's fight, let's fight. But unfortunately, Maria decided, you know, live to fight another day. So, but uh, Mike Bennett actually took out Drew Galloway by hitting Drew in the head with Drew's own briefcase and then basically hitting what seemed like a curve stomp on Drew Drew's head with the briefcase again. And you could tell that it, was one of those really bad injuries because Drew's face told the story. It just basically looked like he was just on a different planet in a different dimension. Where it just looked, his eyes were just glazed over. It was just really, really freaky. Um, another thing that happened was that EC3 finally commented on his loss to Matt Hardy in what was, again, a phenomenal promo. This is one of the reasons why I love EC3. I think that he's an amazing... You know, talker as well as.